Hello, folks. Welcome back. It's time for some more La Mulana pain, I think. <laughs> we will uh, be jumping back in here and trying to see what else we can do in this world of puzzles and nonsense. So let's hop back in here. Now, when we left last time, we had done a little bit more progress in the Gate of Illusion, and we're looking around to see if we could find anywhere else we could go. We've got a lot of bits and pieces, but not a whole lot that necessarily takes us anywhere right off the bat. But I think, on further thought, what we need to do is just go mess around in the Gate of Illusion some more. It's the meanest of the places we've been so far, design-wise, but I suspect it's also the one that has the most next steps available hidden in weird places. So... Once I'm done running around here and beating up some birds, I think we're going to head back over to the Gate of Illusion and experiment a little bit with progressing in there. Because so far, there's been a couple of times I've thought we would need to go elsewhere in order to be able to proceed, but everything we found so far has given us somewhere else to go inside the Gate of Illusion, which makes me think it probably actually just lets us go through it further. So, for now, let's start in the Temple of Moonlight, so that we can get into the Gate of Illusion quickly. And once we're there, we'll be able to take a look around and see what else we can actually get done here, because... That area is mean. Now, I have a couple little theories about what we might need to do in order to proceed there. But first, we gotta get there, so let's... Just get into position first, and then we can figure out what our next steps are going to be. Because... So far in the Gate of Illusion, we've already had to do a couple of unusual things to proceed. We've had to scan a background object. We've had to uh, try and place a weight in a place where there was no weight to place. So I have a feeling there's probably something like that again now where the way to proceed is literally just doing something the game normally doesn't let you do. Putting a, putting a weight somewhere it's not supposed to go. Scanning something in the background in an area that doesn't look scannable. Something along those lines. So, we're going to scoot around here and find it. Like falling in the hole in the floor there, for example. Now, in order to get where we're going... I'm pretty... no, that was wrong. It got us where we wanted to go, though, so that worked out okay. We fall through the floor and then jump through here. That lets us get to the right-hand side. So there's a couple of bits in here that might be relevant. One is this little room here. We know that if we want to be able to go down on either of those sides, there has to be a way to actually descend here or come in from the right-hand wall because you can't go up room transitions. So one of the things I wanted to try was just see if attacking down in here did anything but it looks like the short answer is no. So that's not gonna be it. Fair enough. If we go up further from here, we can loop our way around into the other little extra area because underneath this little waterfall gives us access to the little zone here where we got the mini doll. But if we go against this wall, we teleport again into this zone. And previously, this seemed like the end of the line for us, because there's nothing here that actually does anything useful for us. That button in the bottom left just drops you through the floor. It's just a trap. This one does open this door, but there's nothing over there. And scanning things in here doesn't give us any more information. But... There might be something else in here we can do if we interact with some of the other pieces of this room. Like... If we come up here, is there anything we can scan? No, not currently. Can we... put something on the skeleton? <laughs> yes! Yes, we can! The skeleton is actually a button, it just doesn't look like a button. Okay! There's another portal that takes us over here. So we need to go down the right-hand side, if our previous memory of this actually is true. Yeah. And now we have a whole bunch of buttons. Well... I'm just gonna try and put something on this. Oh, 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 oh! Okay, I see what we have to do here. 
I think I see what we have to do here. That one's really slow, so we have to put a weight on this one and then quickly go and put a weight on all the other ones before it's done, maybe? Because this didn't seem to do anything, but these were instant compared to this one, which was really slow. So let's... Do that. Well, we got the success sound, but I don't know what it did. We can't get out from here anyway. Hey, Pixel, good to see you. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what that did. I guess we'll go out the door and loop around. But something probably changed. Those buttons were tempting us from the second we came in this area, so I'm glad we were able to finally push them, but... <laughs> exactly, the question always comes up. I solved the puzzle, but what did it do? Well, it's a good thing we had a lot of weights on us, otherwise we would have got there and had to go back and buy some more. Didn't mean to fall through here, but maybe I did. Maybe something will be on the top left of the next screen. Let's see, anything different over here? Doesn't look- oh, oh, oh! Hold on, the stairs have opened. There is something new that's changed here. This door really bothers me. <laughs> I want to go in it, but I- It's not a door, it's just a... background element in the wrong place. Alright, so what are we doing here now? No teleports. This is breakable, but... What? Nothing. Ah, it lets us break that one on the other side. And that'll let us push this block down. And that'll let us jump over here to push it under the stairs, so we can actually go up the ladder there. Alright, what does this say? To the living, it is not too late. Give up and turn back. The illusions will only continue. Please, no. <laughs> you don't have to, it's okay. These all say the same thing? They disappear after I read them. They, like, fade out after I read them. I wonder if that's a computer effect. But I think it's only in this zone, so I guess not. I was thinking it could be possible that... We have some kind of program here that makes it easier to tell when you have read a sign versus not. There's the ghosts again. Similar to the colossal Olmec head of the in Mexico. Same message every time. There's the checkpoint, though. Maybe we can actually get a checkpoint going here. There's a fairy-looking wall below us. Great. I don't know what that's all about. There was a human wall before, but now there's a fairy one. Does this connect into the previous room as expected? Yes, but you can't go through there. Okay. What does this say? Nothing. Good message. Where are we in the level, too? Lizard's room. That's a weird thing to say. There's a switch over there, too, that I'm unclear about. All right, Lizard, what is your room all about, then? We've got a section up here. Presumably we need to get above it in order to push the block down. This? Yeah. This is obviously something. A faint light shines through the cracks in the wall, indeed. But I don't know what we're supposed to do with that. So... Hey, Yamatsuma and Aizen, good to see you. I feel like we need to push the block this way and then bring it over to here and then drop it down to the bottom and bring it somewhere in the bottom here. I don't see a panel for a switch, but I have a feeling that's what we've got to do. Ow. Alright, I didn't see that eyeball. I accidentally attacked the ceiling. My bad. You have a fairy over here. Okay, never mind. I'll go down this door instead. 
What's in here? Bones moving helper. That's a lonely house moving. Let's move. I'll buy it or I ain't moving. I don't have $300. More bombs I can't buy and really expensive weights. Interesting. I wonder if you can make his prices more reasonable in any way, because those seem very expensive for what they are. We've got... a blue item fairy. If I bring this fairy back to that fairy door, does that do anything? Do you care about the fairy door at all? Looks like no. Oh well. There was a chance that it would be relevant, but since this fairy is mostly busy using sub-weapons, it's probably, if we need to get a fairy, we need to get the key fairy, not the uh, stabbing things fairy. Alright. Are we trying to go down there? I guess. If we want to see what that sign says, we'll need to drop off and get down there. Let's go up and take a look. We're a little low on health again now, which isn't ideal. Ow! I commend thee for reaching this place, wise one. Now free thyself of doubt and illusion. I need to take the weapon off this fairy or it's gonna kill us. Because I think... Aha! We have exactly one health, it's true. We have a sign that says to free us cells from doubt and illusion. I don't know what we're doing with this yet, but that moves. We're gonna have to go back and heal, and we'll come back here again. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get to the checkpoint yet. But it'll be better to be there and be alive than to be dead, so... Let's grab ourselves some extra weights, because I just spent all of mine. And get back into the Gate of Illusion where things continue to suck. I think this sub-weapon fairy might be my least favorite one. It just doesn't uh, seem super reliably useful. There's so many places where attacking the walls or attacking things you're not supposed to hurts you that it seems questionably valuable to me. Wasn't looking where I was going. Alright. Let's get back into the Gate of Illusion, because evidently there's more stuff to be done in there. Fairy's gone, but that's okay. Back up we go. Alright, so now that we have looped through this once, it should be a little bit faster to get where we want to go, because we don't need to go through the whole teleport gate set. We just need to go over to the top left, and then we can go back up the stairs. So that is a nice little time savings on having to go through this several times. But let's get over there. Oh, handy, the box stays in the same place, too, so we don't have to move that every time. Uh, couldn't quite get on the elevator this time, but we'll get on the next one. Gotta get another money fairy in here. The price of weights is prohibitive to your game-collecting hobby. Exactly! The problem is the fairies are random. I feel like if we want to try and farm with a fairy, we just need to go to one of the really easily accessible fairy locations, like the one in the... Oops, I need to grab that. The one in the... Hold on a second. We can go to the right here as well. I was going to say the one in the, the, the water area. The spring in the sky. Because that... What's over here? That, nothing. <laughs> it's a dead end. Great. Um, 
that has a pretty easily accessible fairy spot, so it's a, if there's a, anywhere we can reasonably try and farm for a specific fairy, it's probably there. But... I don't know if that's what we're supposed to be doing or not yet. So we come back up here and everything is back the way it was. We gotta make sure we're not using the axe in here, because if we attack the ceiling, the game gets mad. But that's fine, we can work our way around here. Now, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Really? <laughs> You're gonna hang out there right beside the eye that'll shoot me for a third of my health if I accidentally miss whip? Get over here. Get over here. BAT! Alright, that's good enough. I can deal with that. Okay, so where do we need to bring this weight? Because this is a weighted block. That we can push around. Is this a thing? We just need to cover this? Doesn't look like it. Well, where else would we need to take it then? If we block the stairs, does that do anything fun for us? It's the worst place to take this, because we are now definitely trapped in here. Maybe we have to push the top one. I bet you that's what it is. The top one is pushable, but only if you have a platform here to sit beside. Well, I have a way to reset this room, so we're going to have to go back again. That's the problem with experimenting with things like that. Sometimes you get it wrong, and there's no way to go back but to loop. I would not have been surprised, though, if the Gate of Illusion wanted you to potentially softlock yourself in order to proceed, because that's exactly the kind of thing that you normally wouldn't do, and the Gate of Illusion is all about forcing you to do things that normally wouldn't make any sense. So, it was worth a shot, at least. But I think we are going to push through the wall there. These bats are so annoying! Gotta go back to having the axe out. So I can actually hit them from above. There we go. Take the cash, though. And let's loop it around again. Alright. Alright. I think I know what we're gonna do now. Well, let's get over there and test it out. Down the hole. Up to the top left. Up the stairs. Up the elevator. At least we can do this pretty fast now. The only downside is that I'm not very good at getting out of this room without- or the next room, rather, without hitting the spikes on the way up. Or the way down, rather. Well, let's check the fairy spot again, since it seems to be illuminated. It's the same fairy! It's the one I don't want. <laughs> Alright. Hey! I made it through the hole in the floor without getting spiked this time. I'll take it. Alright, so the only other theory I have on what to do with this block is to push it... Get out of here, bats! Is to push it right up against the right-hand wall and then push this block too. Yeah! Alright. Uh... What did that do? I thought I saw something move, but I don't know what it was. Well, we opened the ladder. That's something, at least. Yeah, something happened somewhere, but I don't know what it was. Was it a door opening down the bottom left? Or bottom right here? No, this has opened before. Is there a door here? No. 
Did this change? No. What do we have going on around here? No, the checkpoint access is still blocked. Just for fun, let's push this against the wall and see what happens. Nothing. Alright, this area is not any more accessible than it was before. There's still this, though. Let's just, just for security's sake, pop a flare at that. Throw some shurikens at it. Hit it with a spear from above. No. Hmm. Yeah, I thought something changed with the floor, too, but I don't know what... What changed down here? I only saw it out of the corner of my eye, which makes it hard to know for sure what we're gonna do with it. Everything's the same in there. Alright, no obvious tricks down in that little space. Did this sign change, maybe? No, same message as before. Anything new over here? We may have to go back to a completely different part of the level. That would not surprise me, if this is just not where the thing we unlocked it is at all. The Gate of Illusion is all about this kind of nonsense. Because if there's some way to get over behind it, then we can push it down towards some of these other interesting bits. But I don't see what else it would be. Alright, up we go then. This one is still illuminated only because I can't understand it, I assume. Aha! This floor is missing! That's what changed! Behold the gate of illusion. A path shall open for the wise. Alright. Well, now we still can't get in here, probably, but uh, at least we've got a checkpoint, so we don't have to keep walking back here manually every time. That's a big plus. Be a little man. Only the small shall proceed. I... <laughs> what? Alright, I think this is a door that would only open if we successfully proved we were small. Because earlier, when we brought the mini doll to the giants and we got that, like, giant's approval as being small, I think that is what opened this door. Otherwise, this would probably still be closed. So... Ooh. Later, ghost. That's what my assumption, anyway, is that that's what's going on there. Since that had to be unlocked, I'm gonna go up first and see what's over here. This looks like a philosopher's room? I could be wrong about that, but it looks like one. <coughs> We're gonna take a little walk through the spikes here and see if anything interesting happens. No, but it does make it a little bit easier to fight these guys without accidentally taking damage on the way. Unlock the key to the corridor that runs endlessly. Yes, I would like to do that. Thank you very much. If you would be so kind as to let me get that key, I would love to take it. Is this a philosopher room? Oh! This is the Gate of Guidance! The Gate of Illusion, of course! The Gate of Illusion is the flip side of the Gate of Guidance! Okay! We actually... this is... this is... that makes sense to me. This is a button. Okay, that broke the trap at the bottom. I made it this far despite being dead! I deserve a pat on the back! I'm trying to pat you on the back there, Skeleton. It's not working. 
Alright, let's keep rolling then. We should be able to go get that chest now, I think. The only- Aha! It also opens the stairs! Okay! We are getting places. You didn't get it until that exact point on your playthrough? I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense once you see it. Hey, what's in here? Yagu Map Street. <laughs> okay. Um, software. What is Yagu Map Street? An advanced version of the Yagu Map software, featuring greater details on the map. Do you need both of them? What does this do? Oh. It adds colors. I don't know what they do, though. What if we put both of them in there? If we take off... Mirai. I don't remember what Mirai does. We have it turned on all the time, but I don't remember what it's actually for. So I'm just gonna put on both of these map softwares, because that definitely did something. Ah! Interesting. Mirai might be the teleport one. Yes, it is. That's why we have it on. Um, but that's interesting. Okay, well, let's see what we can fiddle around here to get what we want available in the computer. Um, I kind of want the text software. We need the glyph reader. I don't really need guild. And that should give me enough space to get all these things in. The hidden shop isn't quite as important as the other software functionality we've got right now, so let's stick with this for the moment. Now we should be able to teleport wherever we want, and see more details on the map. Now... What is that red symbol for? And if I... Just, just for curiosity's sake, if I take this off again... Alright, it doesn't look like it shows anything that's off the map yet. But that might be something to keep an eye out for. Is if we have any... Uh, hidden rooms, like those treasure rooms in some of the backside areas. If they have a... What? I think those purple rooms are secret rooms. That looked like I was just talking about. If I take the software off here... Yes! They are telling us where secret rooms are. I thought so. Those two purple outlined, outlined rooms weren't showing up without this piece of software included. Interesting. Well, we have an up door here, which I don't trust, and a right door here. I thought that was going to drop me into spikes. This looks wrong, so let's go up. It is wrong! <laughs> it takes us back to the start. Alright. Let's warp out of here, then, because we should be able to warp to the Gate of Illusion now. Ta-da! Back to where we wanted to be. Okay, so... Previously, if we tried to go right here, it was basically... Oh, that's actually more than I thought. We actually can come up in here directly. More ghosts chilling out up here. We know there's still that clue about... ...about doing something but before one can be extinguished. That is a big, unintelligible message. One day we'll have some way to understand some more of this stuff, but that is not this day. Warp? No, it's a hole. We break the seal. What does that do? It lets us up to here, which will probably let us clog this, but I don't know why I want to do that yet, so let's wait for a second before we touch that. He who reads this stone tablet, art thou a wise man or a fool? We must hope that thou possess the wisdom of a wise man. We must hope that indeed. What's in here? 
Aha! The other side of the Tower of Ruin! That opens the Crusher at the top again, but it will definitely murder us. We haven't saved in a while, so we gotta be a little bit careful in here. Because I can drop down in that hole, but if I drop down in the hole, I don't see how we're getting out of there. I mean, I know how I'm getting out of there, but... Oh, look at that. Never mind. I can jump into the bottom of this tile, but there's nothing here to stand on, and, and it warps me down. There's like an invisible something here. That the game, like, glitches out if I try and stand in it. Well, obviously this is wrong. Um, but we needed to come in here and just see what would happen in case there was anything hidden there. We're gonna warp back out to the Gate of Illusion, because we're not done in there yet. The Gate of Illusion has more secrets to unveil for us, so... One thing we need to do is we need to jump down this hole and see what happens to us. Great. Um... <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, warp our way out of here. That's a big fella at the bottom. I, uh, doing a bit of acupuncture, sleeping on the spikes there, right? Oh, I pushed the wrong button. Dang it. Back to the Gate of Illusion. So, presumably, we don't want things to be falling onto that pile of spikes, because the ghosts falling and dying there is going to make something worse for us. If I had to assume, that is what I would assume. Because we can get down here now. Those who, don't, those who do not listen, do not make light of the words of others. To come so far, blinded by pride at thine own powers, thou art a true fool. A fool deserves naught but death. Yeah, okay. Let's let's leave and go turn off the ghost fountain here. Because originally I wasn't sure what the ghosts were falling down, what that was actually going to do. But now that we know what it does, we know we don't want them to have it. So let's go turn that off. We're probably going to need to heal before we come back here, but you know how it is. There's a switch up there, which is interesting. There might... Whoa, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> what was that? Apparently we clipped through the wall. Alright, not quite what I had in mind, but okay. What I was gonna say is, there's probably a place where if we can come through here and land here and walk back, there's probably a, this tile here will drop us through into here so we can push this button. That's my suspicion. We're gonna go close off the trap here first, though. Because that's probably important. Let's uh, save. Oh no, I went back in this room, so I gotta do the loop again. Actually, I can just warp. Hold on, we have the warp now. Let's just save here real fast so we don't lose any progress in case I screw anything up. And let's just go test that theory at the top here. I think it's a reasonable theory, so let's give it a quick testerino. Never mind. It did work. I just completely failed my jump. Ah, interesting. We have a platform there now. Unclear why we want a platform there now, but there is one. Let's go back to the surface real quick and heal, and then we'll go back and see what we can do with that big fella. Hopefully he'll have stopped healing now. Now all the Maiden Ghosts will just break all their ghost bones on the cold stone floor instead of getting impaled? Yeah! Exactly. Everyone knows that ghost bones need to be cracked every once in a while, otherwise they get stiff. They'll be a skeleton if they have too many bones. We need to make sure they don't have too many bones. So really we're doing them a service here. Alright, it says there's a door in that room at the bottom of the waterfall. But I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. We're gonna 
We're gonna ignore that for now. Alright, so... Now we have... I think all we have to do is go down and see what is in... Yeah, skeletons. Don't like them. Um... Is go down and see what is in the actual boss arena now that we have turned off that trap. This seems like it is nothing yet, but we'll probably need to come across that way or something later. Don't know what this is here for right now. Oh, I know what this is here for. It lets us get to this. Oh, we're stuck in the wall again. This, this area really does not like the walls. I don't know what I'm doing with this little altar, though. No, it doesn't care about that. Do we have anything else that would be relevant to the little altar? I don't think so. Yeah, this is looking like a big no. Alright, well, we'll have to come back here later, maybe, once we have a chance to figure out what to do with it. But... This is what opening this gets us access to. We just don't know why. Alright, that's fine. We can make our way back around again now, and go figure out what's up with this new boss. Give it a quick save, and back down in we go. Our shield might actually come in handy for this, because this guy seems to be throwing a lot of projectiles at us pretty fast. He's no longer healing. Okay. Woo! I can't do anything to that device. He's got a shield at the bottom. It looks like it has a gun in it. If he hops over this way, I can kill him with spears from above. But if he's only going to hop over to the back corner, it's going to be a lot harder for us to do anything to. I do enjoy how he has all the sub-weapons. That's pretty fun. He's throwing chakrams, he's throwing rolling shuriken, he's throwing regular shurikens, he's got the shield. Please come over here so I can start stabbing you in the head. Come on, bud. Come on, a little more. You can do it. No, he's not gonna do it. Alright, we'll go down then and see what happens. Can we hit him at all? Uh, not like that. I guess we're gonna try and hit him back with some sub-weapons. If we rolling shuriken, this could be the rolling shuriken's moment of glory. If we get him to- no, no, we just jump at him, don't we? <laughs> I was like, if we can get him to block up while we throw a rolling shuriken from, like, over here, that would be a way to do it, but that doesn't seem to work here. Let's go for a faster weapon. Ow. Don't get hit directly in the face with that if I can help it. It is really hard to hit this guy from a place that's not, like, in his face. Because if we shuriken from far away, presumably he's just gonna block it. Yeah, but that does lock him in place. I can't shoot him in the ankles then, though, which is weird. I kind of assumed that would be the play. What do we do then? Did you miss anything? We've made some progress here in the Gate of Illusion. We've solved a couple more puzzles. Nope, he just eats those too. I feel like our best shot here was to not be down in the fight arena with him at all and just spear him from the ceiling, but that doesn't seem super viable right now. We can hit him, but like, it's not good, <laughs> right? It locks him in place temporarily sometimes, like there. That, I think, is what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that animation where he, like, holds in place for a second so that we can jump over and then shoot him in the head. But it's unclear to me still if that is indeed the best course of action here. 
That's exactly what I was thinking, Hot End, is uh, switching to the X so we can hit him from slightly further away. It's not quite as fast, which might make it harder to manipulate his aim. But yeah, we're waiting for that lock-in-place animation so we can jump up and slap him. Like that. But we're still getting bodied every time here. See, now he comes forwards. The whole time I was up there before, he refused to cooperate with us, but now he comes forward right away. Um, just hit him, little guy. Come on, Lameza, you can do it. Hit him with the axe. You have to be really, really close, otherwise it is out of range and doesn't work. It's very finicky on the positioning. We're getting a bunch of hits in, I have no idea how tough this boss is. Yeah, rolling shuriken continue to be useless, sadly. There he goes! Hey, it's the ghosts! Ah! <laughs> I was almost out of range. Almost out of range. Well, we got another achievement there for uh, La Mulana. I think that was This Is La Mulana 3? Yeah, this is, this is La Mulana Part 3. That's fine. We'll go back and do it again. I almost moved over enough to not get hit by it naturally, but then I still got slapped. The game is mean, but I feel like I almost uh, saw that one coming. I knew something was going to happen with the, the ghosts there. I didn't think it was going to be the chandelier falling on us, but I didn't think the time was to immediately open the box. And I was correct about that, if nothing else. Come on. There we go. Body block. Yeah, I can hit him twice if I time it real good. Alright, he's done. Grab the money, grab the experience, get out the way. Cronk. What's in the box? The Key of Eternity! Okay! Well, that sounds like it'll open up the Infinite Corridor, so that sounds pretty nice. And that just takes us back out to here again. This was the Tower of Ruin, right? Yeah. I don't know what the point of getting in here right now is, because as it stands, we still can't actually do anything in this area. Yeah, that, that won't let us punch it open still, so I'm going to have to warp out of here before we die. Let's go save somewhere. Like the surface, so we can heal. And we'll get back in there. Let's go heal real quick. It's satisfying beating even just a mini-boss in that place, because we have spent a lot of time going back and forth not getting anything done in the Gate of Eternity. Very satisfying to actually make some real progress there. Alright, now we want to warp to the Endless Corridor. And go down to that keyhole at the bottom. Let's just make a new save here, since we haven't made one of those in a while. Just to make sure everything's still fine. Alright. Can I use the Key of Eternity? A key that can unlock the seals in the Endless Corridor. Press the item button to insert the key. Okay. That was cool. All right, let's go down. Men are born of the mother and live their lives. They reproduce and reproduce, helping in the mother's ascension. Go forth along the path that man is destined to walk. Let's save that one. Am I gonna play Armored Core 6? Yes, I will definitely play it. I don't know if I will stream it. But I'm looking forward to playing it. I really enjoyed the armor cores that I've played in the past. But 
I think it might have actually just been four. But I really enjoyed it anyway. I think... What? What? Okay, I don't know what this means yet. So, these look like they are numbered gates. I suspect what we have to do here is go through them in the correct order. Because if I pull out my little notepad, ugh, we can see none of these necessarily look like the numbers I've got. But they easily could be. This one looks like one of the numbers on our weight. I don't know what the number is, but it's a number that's higher than three. So I don't know what exactly we're trying to do with these yet, but let's, uh... Let's go take a look around. I haven't... Uh, seen what kind of build am I going for? I have no idea. I have not really thought about the builds for Armored Core. Um... There's a percentage sign door? That's a new one to me. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to the Elden Ring DLC. This is a violently pooping horse. I just realized that. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. So we got a lot of these gates here that are gonna be mad at me for going at them in the wrong order. What is that thing? <laughs> Apparently it's an enemy. All right. Yeah, I really enjoyed some of the uh, Dark Souls 2 DLCs in particular. They had some really good ones in there. Let's go in through the bottom so we can make sure we bother all of the gates that don't want us to go through them. Oh, actually... Oh, no, I can. We can just have to go all the way around. Like, the, uh, the Ivory King and the Iron King DLCs were both really cool. So... I'm looking forward to what they can do with a whole other DLC for Elden Ring. Gotta be very careful what I attack in this room. Because those smiley gates usually don't like it if you attack them when you're not supposed to. We're lighting up all these doors, but I don't know what <laughs> is gonna happen with them yet. We're just illuminating them all. Do they care about the side that you enter them through? We're like, we've definitely done this in the wrong order. So, we are... really only hitting the gates to see what'll happen. Not because we think it'll be correct. Alright, one last gate to go harass. And then I will successfully have hit them all in the wrong order. Now what? Now I have infinited every doorway. Am I doomed? <laughs> Is this like a you can only try it once thing? Unclear. It definitely doesn't seem to be resetting though. Let's loop back to the start. If we leave this area, does it reset? Yes. Okay, so we can reset the gates. We can reset the gates. It looks like, basically, we have to just not walk through any gates in the wrong order. So the problem here is not knowing what the numbers are. We have... We have five numbers currently known, but we can get all of them in here. I just don't know where they go. Like... One of the numbers that we can see here is a small... 
diagonal line under a tall diagonal line under a little diagonal scoop. One of them is like a little... Actually... That's interesting. This one looks kind of like the number three. It's just missing the like vertical scratch beside it. And I guess it also doesn't have the down stroke. So it's similar to three, but it's the other, like, not the same. It's more like a seven with a little line out of the top. Let's go take a look at what other uh, gates there are in here while this horse has a real bad time. Um, there's that same number again. That's interesting. This gate here looks identical to one of the gates in the other room. This one is the same. So we have that one twice. Other than that, we also have this very tall one. Right here. Gonna make a note of that, just so I don't, uh, don't forget. <laughs> you hesitate to suggest, but will it scan? Um, I think we can guarantee it won't scan, but we can go give it a check in a second. Let's just go beat up some of these flowers so they don't make this annoying while I'm trying to take pictures, or, uh, make notes, rather. So that one there... Okay, this tells us that this version of three is correct. I'm gonna make a quick note of that. Because there were two mirrored versions of the number three, we weren't sure which one it was. Now we know that this is three. This one in the top here is two. And this one, do I have a picture of this already? Uh, maybe. This might be the other one from our weight measurement. I'm unsure if it's meant to be the same picture as I drew earlier. And it's just I drew it badly. Little one of these, little one of those. Little one of these. Little one of those. Yeah, I can't tell. Some of these look pretty similar. But at least we know where two and three are in this room. And then we got these weird ones as well. The percent sign seems particularly on the nose with existing symbology compared to everything else in this place. So we might need to come back here later once we have a way to figure out what these numbers are. But at least we have some more context now on what the numbers might be. Make a quick note of this one. It's a percentage sign. And that one, it's two defibrillators being charged up. So yeah, one of those must have been one of the numbers I already know for one, and I just didn't recognize it at that shrunken scale, because I didn't see that one symbol particularly noticeably anywhere. But this one, I guess it's this one. Yeah, that must be one. So... Let's reset the room real fast. And just for curiosity's sake, if we go through this, it does not immediately do anything. So if we walk through number two, we might actually be able to figure out which numbers are which if these gates work the way I think they're going to. Because now we know two is the top left one. So we come up and around to go down and through two once. No, nope, that didn't do it. And then through three. Okay, so there's obviously something I'm still missing here. All right, because it feels like my original theory was that we needed to basically path a way through here that goes through all the numbers in order. And if we did, it wouldn't trigger them as being cleared, so we'd have to do it the right way around. And that would give us some context about whether or not we were doing it correctly. But it doesn't seem to be giving us that information, so... We're probably going to come back here when we have a little bit more number knowledge. Because, uh... 
I don't... I don't know how to do that. Now, it does say specifically that it's along the path that man is destined to walk. So one of our other messages from in here that was talking about, like, the stages of the children or the ways we were destroyed, that might change the number order we're supposed to go through. But for now, I think I just don't know what I'm doing in here. So I'm going to leave. All right. We may come back here in a little bit once we have a better chance to do something with our numbers, but what I want to test right now... First of all, the map tells me there's a door at the bottom of the waterfall. So I'm gonna go over and check that out real quick. We're probably not gonna stay there for long, because if there isn't one, then I'm guessing it has to open later and we just don't have access to it. But... It told me there's a door there, so I need to go see. So, we'll do a real quick trip over that way. Then, we're gonna go see if we can figure out where some of these secret rooms are, because the map is now telling us where secret rooms are. And that could be quite useful to us. Let's go to the left here. This is where it says there's a secret door. I assume it's behind these lighter shaded rocks, but we still don't have any way to interact with them, so I guess... Now is not the time. All right, that's fine. Gate of Guidance. Is there a secret room in here? No. Mausoleum of Giants. Is there a secret room in here? No. I wouldn't be surprised if none of the main world areas have a secret room. This one does, actually. We know that that is, because that's the room where Isis is. We actually found her already, so I guess my theory is already proven wrong, so that's a good start. While we're here, let's go take a quick peek and see if that giant sphinx has decided to fall over. I would be surprised if it has, but we are here already, so we might as well go take a quick look. Ah! I would have made it over Sonic, but I couldn't make it over the bird. Uh, no, it looks like it has not decided to spontaneously fall over, sadly. Can I hit it with a spear from above? No. All right. So it goes. Now, is there anywhere else that might have secret rooms? Spring in the sky, have you got any? No. While we're here, and there's two things I wanted to check. One of them is that it seems like every world is now identifying which room has the compass in it. And that's weird. I, we've seen that compass iconography all over the place, but it hasn't done anything yet. But now it is. Can I scan the compass? Just, just to complete our curiosity's sake here, can you scan the compass? Get up. Don't get hit by a fish. All right, we put on the scanner software, which I need more space for, so I guess we'll take Mirai off for a second. Unsurprisingly, no, the scanner does nothing. We turn it off again, and we put Mirai back on. All right. Since all hope is now lost, we can go pick up a ferry and see if it will give us loads of cash. Nope, it is my least favorite ferry. All right, well, let's warp into Inferno Cavern, because I think we know there's a couple of rooms here. No, there's just the one. But we've been in that room already. It's not actually hidden, it's just connected through the wall. Now, this is apparently accessible from another area. That's good to know. At this point, you expect me to beat the game and the scanners used to read the credits. Yeah, seriously. Um, alright. That's at least something. Chamber of Extinction. Anything in here? A whole set of hidden rooms. Four secret rooms up there. But now we also know that this area and this area are accessible from somewhere else. And there are gates to get in here from other places, too. So we probably just can't get over there right now. 
Endless corridor, I think we already checked. Yeah, no secret rooms, just lots of rooms. If we go to the Graveyard of the Giants, do we have any secret rooms in here? We do have one. Interesting. How do we get to it, though? Hold on a second. I thought I was seeing... Okay, it was just the uh, shurikens bouncing effects that we were seeing. I thought I was seeing something like... Actually changing there when we were hitting the wall, but I think it was just the shurikens bouncing off it. Yeah, so it's not really a secret room. We can see it from here. We just don't know how to get to it. Good to know. Let's go take a look around elsewhere and see if we can find the other interesting rooms then before we start going any further. Temple of Moonlight has three secret rooms. Okay. We know where one of those is because we've been to it already. I don't think we've been to those other two, though. Have we? Time to go explore, I think. Let's, uh, let's save real quick. Can we get into some more of these secret rooms? Because that could be quite useful. I don't think there's anything else accessible from this area. Unless it's another one of those, like, stand still and the door opens for you automatically kind of deals. But the one below us here is the one that we've actually been in already, I think. Because it's the one where if we drop down this hole, it's right here. Yeah, this is the boulder trap room. So we've done that one already. There's one way down to the bottom of here, which I don't think we've been to yet. That might have been the room where Anubis was, though. So let's loop down here just to double check. It is kind of looking like the Anubis room to me right now. Oh, no fairy here yet, so I guess their uh, respawn timer is a little bit longer than I was expecting. Ah, just quite missed the elevator, that's fine. I do think that one is going to be the Anubis room. But that's fine. We'll loop around and double check it, and then we can go check the last one, which is probably the most interesting looking one to me, because it has a door in it. It might be... It might be the um, Metroid, the Super Metroid Tunnel Room. So it might not actually be anything new, but it is worth checking. Yeah, okay. That room below us is just the Anubis Room. So that's nothing new. Sadly. That's okay, though. Let's loop around down here real quick and just give this room a look. One more chance at finding something interesting. Loop our way around. Climb our way back up. And... Was that always open? I think it was. We found... Yeah, right. This is the room with the spiky floors that go really fast. That we don't know what to do with yet. Okay, so all of these rooms we have actually been in before. We just don't know exactly what needs to happen in this one yet. All right. Well, at least we know we haven't missed any of the secret rooms in the Temple of Moonlight. Tower of Ruin, do you have any secret rooms for us? We don't have a map here, right. Can I hit them with a flare? I don't think I can hit the ones at the top. I'm surprised the answer was yes, I could hit any of them with a flare, though. I kind of didn't expect that to work. Let's jump out of here. So without a map in this area, I guess I can't really check this right now. We know somewhere we need to take 300 coins. But other than that, we don't have a whole lot of options here for where we can go 
in this room yet. There's another one of those compass symbols we don't know what to do with. This is the doorway room that we don't know what to do with. I think I do have to come back to this room and try attacking something else. Like, there might be something in this tile or in here because it looks a little bit different that we have to go interact with. So, we may have to loop back around to that in a minute, but let's just finish the loop. I don't think we have a map for this one either. No. And that takes us back to the Gate of Illusion. Okay, well, there are two secret rooms in here that we might be able to access now, so we're probably gonna have to spend some more time in here before we really go anywhere else. But, the last thing I did want to double check is if we go up... No, that's still covered. Yeah. So something can take you to the right from here and up from here, which looks like it's that little door on the top side. But, is it? I also notice, notice that that is open now. Lots of little oddities in this place. So if we drop down to here and go through the gate into the Tower of Ruin, do we have enough health to experiment with attacking things that probably are not doors? Well, at least this one doesn't try and kill us. Nice. If nothing else, it doesn't try and kill us. Uh, yeah, still doesn't like that, though. I feel like that second pillar might be openable from here, but we don't have enough health to test it anymore, so let's run back to the start. Grab ourselves a quick heal up again, and then we can go back and explore a little bit further inside the Temple of Illusion. I think that secret room in the bottom left is most likely to be something we can actually access, because the one on the top looks like there's some kind of something gating us away from it. So I'm curious about what that one might have for us. I wonder if the fastest way back to that end of the Gate of Illusion is actually just to go to the Giants and warp from there. Because the Graveyard of the Giants... Well, this is actually right on top of where I wanted to go, so I guess, no, this is probably fast, too. Oh, I actually want to go left here. Right. Right. We don't want to go down to the Graveyard of Giants entrance. We want to go left at this room, and then back over to the area where we had that block we had to push against the wall. Right. So, still don't know what to do with that fairy door. I feel like that's going to be something important. But we just don't have any way to interact with it yet. I'll take my rolling shurikens that I will never use, thank you. There's another fairy, we'll see if it gives us anything useful. But we will not hold our breath. It's a healing fairy. Well... That's still perfectly good, because I'm going to take a bunch of damage doing this. So there's got to be some way here to go down. Is there something I have to scan in here? Probably. Is there any tiles I have to place a weight? It would not surprise me. Let's see... Oops. If we come up to the top again, there's nothing else up here that would be relevant, right? This block does still move. This one does not. The text on these haven't changed. Just for fun, I'm gonna block the stairs again with this. And then we're gonna go around underneath it. Just to see what happens. I suspect nothing will happen. But now we know nothing happens. Nothing hidden in the wall there, no. 
Hmm. Yeah, he's not gonna tell us anything different just because we come back in to visit him again. I don't know why I thought that would make a difference. This is still nothing over here. Yeah. Alright, well there's obviously a puzzle still in this room that we've got to figure out what to do with. Because just pushing this doesn't do anything. We've obviously got to bring it somewhere else. This is obviously a breakable wall. I just don't seem to have whatever it takes to be able to break it. We can get around the other side of this fence, but I'm just gonna try and walk into it. No, it does successfully block us. You never know with some of these things. It is the gate of illusion. Just because it looks like there's a laser wall there doesn't mean there actually is. But in this case, it looks like, yes, there actually is. Now, if we come back into this room again... There's nothing else available from here, is there? It doesn't look like it. There is a second gate here, or shop, or something, in that room. I don't know if we've ever been in that room. We might need to go around and see if we can see what's in there. I'm surprised there's no bad guys in here anymore, because most of these rooms, after you beat a boss in them, repopulate with opponents. But this one seems not to have done that. Alright, well, let's warp ourselves back to the starting point of the Gate of Illusion, because we gotta go back down to the bottom anyway, so... Now we can, in fact, take the elevator. Or at least the elevator shaft. There's no more warpy walls down here or any other shenanigans of that type. Doesn't seem like it. These all say the same thing? Yes. It is weird that there's three of the same message in here. I don't think it necessarily means anything, it's just weird. All right, well, it's kind of unfortunate that the Gate of Illusion makes us feel like we have to press our face against every possible surface before we're comfortable moving on, but at least we found out that this time there doesn't seem to be anything, so that's something. And we also know there's no door icon on this room, so I don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to get into that tunnel. Now, in order to get back out of here, I am going to have to loop through the bottom paths, so let's go back around to there. Nice. Now the big thing I have to watch out for here is not falling in the hole in the ground here. Because that's not what we want. Although I actually need to go this way, so... Maybe it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Now... Did we find the door that's relevant here? Maybe we did already. It looks like it is actually in that section where we were going up and uh, back. through the warps, because there was just like a door in there, wasn't there? I don't remember what it was, but there was something up there. Let's go take another quick look at it, and then we'll probably move on again. But first we have to warp ourselves. And then we warp ourselves. Then we fall through the hole. We warp ourselves again. I went the wrong way, so we do the loop a second time. That's fine, right? We don't mind having to do this again. There we go. Easy peasy. So, up here, what was the door? Oh, right. That's right. It was the person who gave us the treasures. Or sent us to go pick up their treasures, rather. Don't you ever come back!
All right. Yeah, okay. Now I remember what they're all about, at least. Can you double jump out of water? No. I think I knew that already. All right. Well, that turned out to be a little bit of a wild goose chase, but it's still fair to double check. We don't necessarily remember what all these symbols mean yet, now that we've just unlocked them. So, we've got the key to eternity. Do we have a way to actually figure out the numbers that we need at this stage? Because that would help us be able to proceed in the, uh, the, the... Endless corridor is the, what I meant to say. Um... If we can figure out what's up with that, it will give us more to work with. Yeah, this just loops us back over to here. There's nothing else interesting there. Rats. Alright. Okay, so... If we read that untranslated, that would potentially be able to give us the numbers. That's true. I, um, have... Actually, we might... Here's a good question. If we turn the software off, because this is the problem. I know that that's there, but I don't remember where in the world it is. But we actually have it in our saved things. So if we just turn off the software reader... Oh. It leaves the text still saved the way it was. Well, I guess we have to go back and find the shaft to the heavens so we can try and figure out what the numbers are. Because... I don't remember what room that is, but that is the only thing that I can think of that has a list of all the numbers 1 through 0. So... Let's go see if we can check that and then go back down there. I was trying to think if there's a way to save us time, but I forgot that the memos actually tell you exactly where they came from. This is the Shaft of the Heavens, so it's this one? No. We leave the glyph software off. Shaft of the Heavens must be this whole uh, column. So it's probably the one in the left-hand side right down here. No, not that one either. This one. No, that's not long enough. There's our one. Okay. So, interestingly enough, this looks like the zero symbol. So, we now know that my one symbol is correct, my two symbol is correct, and our three symbol is correct. Four is that little carrot with a swoop underneath that has like a Z attached. Five is the three diagonal lines. Six is the tall one. With a little hook at the bottom. Seven is the defibrillators. Eight is the percentage sign. Um, I think nine is this one. And I don't know what that thing is. To me, this one looks like this is a head these are arms and these are legs. It's like a person falling headfirst down something. Make a little note of this symbol here. And his shoe fell off. The shoe is, uh, is right here. And then zero is the little tiny uh, seven with a hat. All right. So that gives us all the numbers. We could try and read everything from this, but that sounds like an absolute nightmare. But if we correctly identified the numbers this way, 
that may be able to help us solve two things. So before we go to the uh, Endless Corridor, we're going to quickly go to the Tower of Ruin. Get this mouse off the screen. Because I can now double check if these are the number symbols. We had seen them all, and now we actually have a way to confirm whether or not they're indeed numbers. No. Those are not number symbols. All right, I'm gonna have to make a note of what these symbols look like so that I can cross-reference them with something else. I really don't want to have to manually translate all of the tablets that are not yet translated in the game. Because, like, we can do that. There are a lot of them, but we can do it. I just really don't want to. Alright. So, these mysterious symbols. One is a Y and an X. One is... Uh, I don't really know what to call that one. It, some of these are a little bit, uh, just kind of a bunch of lines. The bottom one is a check mark with an underscore. The top right one has a little backward C under a bird who's pooping. And we have a shrimp with the letter V. And we have an antelope sitting down. All right, we're probably gonna need to cross-reference those symbols later, but at least I have them referenceable. For now, we're going back to the Endless Corridor. A long-necked bunny? Yeah, that's a good one, too. Alright. Because I, I, we've had the ability to translate the text manually for a long time. I've just been trying to avoid having to do it. <laughs> the numbers seem fair, though. The numbers seem fair. So I think the reason why there is zero twice is because we have to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So what I'm going to do here real quick is, on a different piece of my note paper, just make a real quick layout of these rooms. I guess I'll kill the bad guys first. Make a real quick layout of these rooms so I can map the path I'm going to need to go through them. Because... There's a lot of intentional one-way doors here and places where we need to come in from a specific angle. Because, like, as it looks like right now, this is the final gate. The only way to get to it is from this side. Yeah, you see, well, I guess you could go around like that and start there. It could be the starting gate, too. This is why we need to figure it out. So, do a real quick little mini-map here for myself. Of what these rooms look like. gate here. This might not be the most thrilling for you to watch, but I feel like if I don't plan this out properly, there is no way I'm going to be able to actually get through them all in the order that we need. And then so we have, what is this? This is zero in the top left of the room. We have uh, one in the top right of the room. And we have five in the middle of the room. My writing is terrible. All right, next room. Let's go see what we got in here. Actually, I'm gonna go into the bottom and just, uh, well, if I can avoid going through one of the gates, that would be nice. 
so we can just explore it and come back and actually do it without having to reset the area again. Because here we have a zero in the middle of the room. Let me do a real quick draft of this as well. Because I need to make sure I know how these all connect, which is the other tricky bit here. So we have another room here. This one has a little pyramid shape in the middle. Underneath it we have a zero in the center of the pyramid. The bottom left symbol is the six. And the top right symbol is uh, four. Top right symbol is four. Okay. Next room. We'll get this figured out. This is a bit of a mean one for trying to get in and actually kill all the enemies, but I don't really have to. Apart from that one jumpy fella, it's not like they can really easily get over to hurt us. Alright. Time for another quick drawing. Got a little room here. The left-hand side is immediately boxed off, and it has a block sitting on top of it. There is a plot from the top. We've got a layer all the way to the end, all the way to the end, all the way to the end, and a wall here. Okay, what are our numbered doors in this room? We have the weird Z-shaped thing here. Uh, what's that one? That's four? I thought I had four in the other room. No, that's two. That's two. So two is under top right of this room. The center one in this room is three. And the bottom one in this room is nine. Okay, and we have some one-way gates in here. Here and there. And we got a ladder and a ladder. Okay, next room. What do we have in this room, apart from a very, very poopy horse? Well, we're kind of stuck for options in this room, so let's just stand over here and do a quick drawing of it, because anywhere we go is now going to activate a gate, so we're going to have to do that at some point anyway. Final room... is... one top platform goes all the way across... The middle platform is a little stop... And then a bigger platform that stops before the end, and the bottom platform goes all the way across. And... We have a ladder, and there's a wall here. A ladder here, and a ladder there. What are the numbers here? <laughs> no. No, I'm assuming. These puzzles are not the kind of things that would be fun in a Pathfinder campaign. They're way too uh, convoluted. We have seven in the top right here. 
They're fun for a game like this, but not for a game with like four people who are all trying to like do different stuff and might not all be here for the puzzles. And an eight in the middle of the room. Okay, so... Checking off our number set, we do have... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So that does look correct. We are going to be doing that rhythm. In order to make that happen... I think... The one thing I'm unsure of right now is where we start. Which of the zeros do we start on? We're gonna have to go reset the puzzle anyway. But the one thing I forgot to add to my first two rooms is where the ladders are. And we do kind of need to know that because that changes our pathing through some of these areas. Now... And it's just one ladder on top of the pyramid here. Okay, so if we start... I think we end in this room now. I think this is the ending, because we want to end in here so that we get the prize. I think that makes the most sense to me. So let's quickly reset the room, and I think I can make this happen now that I know where they all are and what I need to do. So, first of all, we kill these guys to start with. We don't get flaming pooped on. We have to come through here. Can I not jump that high? Yeah, there we go. All right, zero. That is correct. Now we go one here. Does that not trigger it? There we go, one. In order to get the next one safely, we have to go across here, down the ladder, down on the right, to this position. And that will allow us to then get two, which is here, and three, which is here. From there, we actually have to go back to the pyramid. I don't know if we're not allowed to cross the same door again, or if we only have to hit them once at a time, but this is four. Now that we've hit four, Four. Five is all the way back on the left. So this is five. Five. Six is down and to the right here. Now where's seven? Seven is at the top right of the rightmost room. I'm gonna try not to cross any other numbers while making my way over there. If we touch the same number again, I'm not too worried about it, but hitting a different number when we're trying to go in, up in order is probably not correct. Although I actually can't get over there from here. Huh. Because seven is the one in the top right in this room, and the only way to get there is from the bottom, which is blocked off, or the top, which is blocked off. So how do we do that? I guess we have to loop through the bottom left of the previous area, but that's gonna force me to go through the wrong door. So hopefully this doesn't mess anything up, walking back in front of a door we've already activated because we're going to have to do it a couple of times now in order to get back out from here. All right, so this is where seven is. We can go seven, and then down to eight, and then down again to nine. 
If this doesn't work, then we know we have to do them only touching each door once. So this is nine. Well, it seems like it liked that. The keyhole appeared. Oh. But this didn't... Oh. But I wanted my treasure! <laughs> what? Th I thought we had to end here to get the treasure. Did we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 and end here in order to get the treasure? Uh, that's... I thought it was gonna... Because there's two zeros, I thought it was gonna be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Can I reset this if I leave the room again? Because my plan was to end on top of this thing. No, it is permanently solved now. Huh. We might have to... If I, if I screwed something up here, we have to load the save. I'm just gonna slap this, because there's no blue eye here. That works, apparently. We have the key sword. I guess this one is just, uh... Slappable. A sword whose center is shaped like a key. It is difficult to use and does not do much damage. Fun. It's a keyblade. All right. Well, I don't know what I was supposed to do with this puzzle then, if that wasn't the solution, but it worked, so we'll take it. And I feel like that solution did make sense to me, so I'm cool with it. I just wasn't expecting it to cut us off before the end. All right. Can we use the key again here? Well, I don't know, Squiggly. I feel like the path that man is supposed to take is either a clue that's more important that I just didn't understand. Because this specifically says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So like that seems to me like it's the correct number order. I don't know why doing 0 first worked. If that's what you're going to explain, then feel free to explain why doing 0 first worked. Uh, if you're going to explain some like lore reason why I got the wrong answer and it still worked, that's that probably I don't want to know that yet. But, uh... Either way, we can go down to another floor. Hey, we got some little, uh... Jumpy zombies. Run through with all thy might, or rely on thy wisdom to find a way. Thou chooseth thine own path. Now place the weight. Warning, do not look at the sun with a magnifying glass. <laughs> Great. What is this? Healy Fairy, we'll take it. So let's go take a look around before we place any weights and mess anything up. There's a weird little door over here. I have a feeling this is not going to let us go through it. It did. It's just the background that happens to be weird there. To the one who toils for naught. Thou art foolish. Thou art foolish. Thou art foolish. Thou art foolish. Well, yeah, we know that. 
We knew that already. I thought you were going to teach us something new here, game. I like that ghost horse at the bottom. That's cool. You do have the doors in a specific order, but it doesn't care about wrong doors along the way, just as long as the specific door it's looking for is in the right order. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was what we assumed. Once we once we decided to cross the, the, uh, the additional doors in the wrong order and had to just kind of deal with it if it was wrong... Ah, that does still kill us. So headless horse lasers are more powerful than Anubis beams. That's something good to know. Headless horse lasers are more powerful than Anubis. What are we doing in here? Unclear. I'm just gonna slap this chest with a key sword just to see if anything happens. Don't know what that key sword is for yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. Oh, I entirely believe everything in here is a mythological creature of some kind. <laughs> I don't know why the shard horse does that, but I entirely believe that it's a real mythological creature. All right, we've now looped around, so this is the starting point again. So I guess back we go. Oh no, we're we're stuck. Okay, fine. We'll go back the long way, I guess. Warp ourselves around. Now, yeah, there's our dragon door. So when the key opens, it'll open there. So presumably this will open once we solve whatever this puzzle is. Let's warp ourselves back to the start of the endless corridor so we can get where we need to be. Listen. A creature is a real mythological creature if it's from real mythology, as opposed to if the game just made it up. That's a, a pretty relevant distinction, I'd say. Alright. Down into the pyramid. Now we go over the pyramid, we go down under the next bit. But the only way to get there is to go around the other side first. Uh, okay. Kill the poop and horse. Make our way around again. And let's keep rolling. Okay, back at the start. Don't know exactly what we're doing here. It's a timed thing. Okay. Oh, hold on, where does this go? One saw the colorless map. One saw the colorful map. Together, they shall see the truth. Okay, not what I wanted, but thanks. Interesting. Well, we obviously didn't pass the time limit in time, so let's go back. I was not expecting that floor panel to drop on me, though. Is there anything relevant here if we take the... supplemental map functions off? No, it just looks the same as before. What if we have the supplemental functions on and not the original map? No, it just shows these markings. All right, well, we'll put them all back on again for now. Is there anything else down here? No. Interesting. <laughs> Where's the gaming laptop that can hold all the programs at the same time? Listen, if one of those programs is a Call of Duty game or whatever, you're not fitting everything on there. Modern computers can hold like six games. Alright. I 
I assume if we leave the floor, it'll reset the weight. Yeah. So there could be value in trying to clear out some of the monsters before you actually try and make the run. Because once you're committed, you're kind of committed to running. But if we go past that point, we can't get back. You underestimate my hard drive's power. Indeed I do. Hey, Andy. Thought I disappeared from Wildstone. Don't recommend, remember my uh, FTL content? Yeah. It has been oh, quite a while. I did disappear for a long time. I was not really in the space where I could easily do a lot of YouTube or streaming kind of things. Picked up that fairy just to delete it again for kicks. Now... Oh, missed the jump. That's not good. This is going to be very tight time-wise. Especially with the pooping horse there. Look how tiny he is! Look how tiny he is! I killed a tiny horse. Does he come to be a big horse again? I love tiny horse. No, not teaching swimming lessons anymore. Now I run a support team for an e-commerce company. He's so tiny! But now he's gone. Can I scan that? No. Alright. Alright. Well, unfortunately, we're back in the pit again. And the pit is not a nice place to be, because there's no way out of here. This... this just seems like a mean... time waste. The chest is open now. What does the twin statue do? A stone statue of the legendary twins. It can break the seal of the twins. Well, I guess that means we probably need to go back to the Twin Labyrinth, doesn't it? I don't know what I did to solve that puzzle. But, uh, apparently we solved that puzzle. Yeah, all I was gonna say is we can't really get back out of here easily, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. Alright, well, this can wait. I'm going back to the Twin... Labyrinth. Actually, I'm not. I want to go to the Temple of the Sun. Let's do a quick save here. Because I remember there was a door in here that I was very curious about. <laughs> Puzzles so cryptic they solve themselves, exactly. Alright, Melbrook has nothing new to say. She's just chilling, dreaming about food, which, like, same. Um, if we drop down here, and then down here, can we go through the walls now? No. Oh, oh, the door at the bottom is a door now! The door at the bottom is a door now! Oh, jeez, it's, it's all full of badness in here. Oh, jeez, okay, let's go back. We gotta get out of here and start that timer over. I thought it would be able to let us go through the walls, but it actually lets us go through the, f the doors. Okay. Let's get out of here before things get worse. Does this switch help us in any way? Something changed. Time to run. Uh, I think I actually had to go back out. Let me out. I don't think I can get out fast enough. Uh, no, not quite fast enough. Alright, let's go back and try that again then. We know what we're doing now. I should be able to do that in that 30 second whatever it is window. Ugh, I'm so glad those things that looked like doors turned out that they were, in fact, doors. Because that was so annoying. 
I'm thrilled that the doors are doors. Alright, through the door. Well, I'm not surprised that it kills us when the time runs out. It, it told us going in that it was poison. So, I was expecting to die if we didn't finish in time. It was an email or something we got when we first entered this area that was like, Hey, be careful, it sure is toxic in there, it'll kill ya! Oh, there's another switch opened on this side. Oh, rude! You have to get them both in one run! Okay, okay, we're going to the switch on the other Hermes statue. Nope, that's a bad start. I can't be landing on an alligator. Let's go ahead and take the dagger so I can try and stab him on the way down. Nope, that doesn't work, but that's okay. It pushed us in the right direction, which I'll consider good enough. We can afford to damage boost a little bit here. Now we hop up and over, up and over, up and over, hit the switch, jump out, and down and out. I feel like we were a little slower that time, which is a little worrying. Hey! Okay, the poison is gone, and we've cleared the seal. On the side walls! Nice. I don't know where we are anymore, because my knowledge of this place is all based around weird doors. Is that another grail in here? Black onyx means eloquence. Purple amethyst indicates sincerity. The meetings are infused into the gemstones. I already have this one about rubies. Let's save this as well. Well, I'm gonna jump down here and see what this does. Behold the twin labyrinths. The souls of the twins dwell here. This is the main world version of this, isn't it? Now we're gonna have the twin labyrinths on both sides. Yes! Okay, okay, we're getting places. Not on this elevator, but like we're getting places. This is a pit. I can't get out of here yet. <laughs> Great. We're not getting this place, but we are getting other places. Let's work back up to the uh, Temple of the Sun and come back in from the top again. All right. They did lure us, lure us into the grail point, and I had a feeling when I jumped in there I wasn't going to be able to get out of it again. But I'm still happy to take the checkpoint because I wanted to make sure my understanding of the area was correct. So, I am, uh, I'm happy to fall for that little trap. Plus it lets me save and I don't have to do that again. Alright, there is an angry blue eye in this room, so I gotta be a little bit careful with what I attack. Or where I go, because we know there's at least one blue eye that'll stab you for going to the wrong place. That says nothing! I love a good nothing sign. Don't know about you, but I just love when my reading is nothing. We have a place to go down here, but let's go to the left first. Front and back, where there's a mm, there must be a b. All right, that's fine. Where there's a, there must be a mm. There's like a volcano symbol on it. I don't know what that's all about, but just for fun, I'm gonna fire a flare here. No. Yeah, motto as old as time. Everyone's very familiar with that one. Front and mm, where there's a mm, there must be a boo. All right, let's get down to the bottom here. We have another doorway. These are front side, back side doors. Right now we're in the front side area. That was the back side area because I've gone through that room many a time. Let's 
see if there's anything on this message. At the foot of the footless Neptune, stride boldly forth and the flying pedestal will be... I think, I think we've already done that by dropping on that platform by mistake a long time ago. So, thanks for the hint there, game, but I got that one covered by just messing up earlier. <laughs> what do we have in here? Oh, man. The twin labyrinths are big, and now that we actually are in the real version of them, there's a whole lot more to explore again, and I'm expecting a lot more traps. Ah! Okay, hold on. If that takes us to the normal world version of this... Ooh, what's this? A ring! What does the ring do? Armor passed down by a weapons master. Increases your manual skills, making you better at throwing weapons. Nice, I guess that makes all of our sub-weapons stronger, except for probably the gun. Because there's a button on that one, too. We, in order to get here, have to get to that same doorway in the other version, I bet you. Before we go do that, though, let's go explore around here a little bit more. Uh, I throw bullets, but only with assistance. The order you've done this in the order of clues is very wacky. Yeah, apparently I've done a lot of stuff very out of sequence. This is a weird place for a button. I'm gonna leave that one a, a little there for a second. I wonder if this is now where we're finally going to find that lamp of time we were supposed to have ages ago. Chant a spell to the spirit that holds the secret. The secret elixir that gives shape to the spirit. <laughs> okay! Let's put that one in the I don't know what this means yet, but I guess we'll eventually figure out pile. Oh, I want the map! Give me the map! What does this do? Something somewhere opened. Great. <laughs> Alright, let's work our way over to the map. Now the old man is ready on the tablets. Uh, the game loves giving us incomprehensible nonsense. I bet you that switch opened this uh, panel from the other room there. Because this looks like the room we started in. And that bottom section was not openable before. Whoa, this is a huge area! That's a huge area! Oh! Oh, elevator's working now, nice. Huh. Let me just take a little look over here before we go anywhere else. Is this taking us directly across? It sure seems like it is. Are these sections still disconnected, or are they fully mirrored? That one is there. If we go left down here, does that bring us into an area we can actually access? No, right, this is this room. Okay, so some of these sections don't connect easily from where we have access to, which is explaining why this side opened up a path to loop around to the start. So that's fine. Well, the exactly hot end. We're, we're changing a lot of things as we're exploring the world, but as a result, it's easy to be unclear about what exactly everything we're changing does. Now, in theory, if we come up to here, is there a gate here? Or do we have to find the correct gate in this room? Yeah, there it is. Sweet, now we're in this side, we hit a switch. Something changed, but I don't know what again. Time to go figure out what's different now. Aha! These panels have been raised. Is that a sword? Okay. We got another sword type. 
Let's go see if we can figure out how to get over anywhere new now. There are a bunch more doors available to us, so we need to go find out where they all go. Do I have a map for this side? Ah! It is the same thing! It is the twin labyrinths being mirrored. This is the cross between the front side and back side. Interesting. Where does this door take us? Unsurprisingly, it takes us to the mirrored room on the other side. Okay. That's fine. What does this tablet say? There is a god that controls death. There is a god that absorbs life. The words that seal these powers were entrusted to an innocent girl. Alright. Are we back in the maze rooms now? I think we are. Because this is the exit from the maze. Because now we should be able to get to Little Brother and Big Brother's rooms without having to navigate the maze. This is Little Brother's shop. I think the innocent girl is almost certainly Melbrook, yes. She's been entrusted with a bunch of things so far already that we know about. Does this currently maze us, or have we demazed it because we've navigated... Yeah, we have the map now. We've demazed the area. That's the one-way door there. Okay. And that still takes us out. Okay, we're getting places. We're getting places. Let's go through this little portal for now. Have I done anything on this side yet? I don't think so. Nothing listed there. What's up here? Oh no, we have been in some of these rooms. So these rooms are all, I guess these edge rooms, these uh, six rooms on the left and right edges of the world, are actually the labyrinth rooms that we came into before, because this is Big Brother's room. Yeah. Okay, so what's in here then? Oh, I actually didn't even remember there was a door there. Interesting. Okay, well let's take a look and find some of these other teleportable doors. Because there's obviously still a lot of stuff left for us to find. This is the teleport we went in last time. This room on the left I don't think has a warp door in it. No. So let's do a quick save before we die to one of the various death traps in here. There we go. And there's nothing else in this room either, so we can go right across. Well, fell right on that, didn't I? Can I get out from here? Yes, I can. And we didn't even fall into any of those other death traps either, so that's a nice plus. If we go all the way across here, that's interesting. There has never really been a uh, backside, frontside split for this area because it's such a weird design. In the oh, I fell in the hole! Such a weird design in the first place. All right, we need to go heal. We're almost dead. So let's jump back to the surface real fast and grab some health. Do you have anything interesting to say, Zilpud? Nope. I gave him a chance, and he squandered it. How many times did I fall into that hole now? Oh, many times. Many times. Quick sip of water here. All right, back we go.
Okay, so... This area does have a strong Castlevania vibe in the music, too. That initial, like, riff when you show up feels very Castlevania. Now, I don't remember if it's actually worth going through these two gates. We can do it, but, like, I don't know if there's any good reason to. All right. We know there is a cool thing we can go find if we can just figure out how to get over to it, so... Let's go figure out how to get over to it. It might need us to beat Baphomet, which would be sad. Because I still don't have a way to even start fighting Baphomet. Ah, this is one of the maze doors, isn't it? That is the maze. So no, this isn't the maze. Where does this go? I don't think I've been in this room before. Well, the problem with Baphomet is just that I actually can't fight it. We don't have an Ankh gem, so I am not eligible to fight Baphomet. Whatever I might want to do. These rooms don't have any doors in them, right? Yeah. It would be weird if the boss arena did. But that's okay, now we know the door over here takes us to an area we haven't been to yet, so that's almost certainly going to be relevant. <laughs> Ankh Jet? Yeah. Listen, it's the, it's the pinnacle of modern technology, the Ankh Jet printer. Alright. What does this say? The Ankh is always in the front. When thou findest the right spot, think carefully on where that spot is. Great. Unclear what to do with that yet. What do we have to the right here? Ah, the sword! The Dance of Life. Three left, three right, one person jumping. So we probably attack to the left three times, attack to the right three times, and then jump. Let's save that one, just in case. If I read that, does it save the bits? Yes, it does. Three attacks to the left to the sword, three attacks to the right with the sword, then we jump. Katana! A Japanese sword suited for slashing. Attacks from the bottom up. Like that. That's my new dance move. I hope you liked it. Last time we tried that at the club, we needed to talk to the police afterwards. Ah, uh, that is... The cursed dance, indeed. Well, we know this isn't the Ankh, still. And now we are gated in here, right? We can't go back? Yeah. That's fine. We'll make our way back around through the mirror doors. This takes us through to here, so if we go down and then to the right, that'll take us back to the door we wanted to be in. It is kind of just a bigger and slower knife, it's true. I don't entirely know what it's good for. Ah, there's a chest in that room though, that's interesting. I don't entirely know what it's for, but uh, we'll probably figure it out eventually. Let's go up here, since this was also locked till just now. I think we've been in this room, haven't we? We've been in the mirrored version of it, at least. Alright. Man, those paralysis shots are annoying. 
Let's get up here and read this. It says nothing. I'll take the weight, though. Thank you, game. Now, there should be an exit to the right here. Interesting. There's some glowing skulls up there. We love that for us. Aha! Top Neptune's navel! Poseidon's navel! You can just stand here. Alright, that makes sense to me. What's in this little room first, though? The right hatch is Skulled. The le left hatch is Verdandi. Hmm... Is it, then? <laughs> uh, I'll... I'll take your word for that. Is there something here we can get rid of that we don't need anymore? I'm gonna get rid of this one. I feel like sleep within the woman. We, we already know what we're kind of needing to do, we just don't know how to get there. The demon altar is where the witches gather to summon the demon. The demon altar is a place for prayer. Two witches, black and white, call forth Baphomet. We already solved that puzzle, but thank you. Let's go up through the skull door, I guess. Hello? Nope, no skull door for us. Can't scan this either. Can I examine something here? Is anything can be done with this? No. I guess we need to get the ladder to exist before we can make use of that. I'm just trying to kill this ghost and it does not want me to let me do it. Is there anything else that would be relevant here? Because this is obviously the atop Poseidon's navel message we got ages ago. But if there's nothing here... Let's try this. One, two... Three, one, two, three, jump. No. There was a couple other little things we saw about ghosts a long time ago. But I don't know if this is it. I don't think I still have that message either. Let's try our skull here. Nope, that doesn't do nothing. What about a, a key sword? Unsurprisingly, it does not do anything either. All right, well, there's obviously something here, but I don't know what to do with it yet. So we'll have to come back to that. Let's go left here instead. Well, we've spawned a ladder in from something, and this is an exit to another area. Ah, this was at the beginning. Okay. This is the uh, the part, the room that we were running through when we were trying to find... I think this is actually the ladder down I want. Yeah, no. Yeah? Yeah. I'm stuck in the pillar. We don't like that. What is this? Hey, it's an Ankh Jewel. All right, they do exist. So now we have another Ankh Jewel. We should go check what that symbol at the bottom left says. Now we can go fight another boss. The priests lived in the ruins, watching over all. The four priests turned their bodies to stone, becoming philosophers as they etern obtained eternal life. Well, we knew that happened already, so that's not news. Ow. Don't jump on my head. If we come up here, where does that take us up? Just back into this room, okay. Let's see where this takes us. Because this didn't exist before. Huh. That's, that's a nice looking place we got here. Not at all haunted. Yeah, I mean, like, 0% haunted, right? That's... that's good... normal... Uh, human skeletons... with the skulls of fish lying around. 
Yeah, we love that for us. Before we mess with anything in here, I think I probably want to go save first. Because <laughs> this seems like the kind of thing that would easily just smush us to death. So let's, uh, let's go save first. We should be able to go left from here, and there's a save point at the bottom of this room, which is now accessible. Nice. Now we survive those? Oh, okay. Well, as long as one of us is confident. He's gotta have the right mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta have that impenetrable to crushing uh, grind set, you know? That's really what's keeping me back from achieving my full potential these days. Alright, let's get in there and probably immediately die. Does this seem safe? Well, we have a map. <laughs> I love it. That wasn't even a welcome to La Mulana moment. That was just a you get a smoosh. But I, I called it. I called it. I knew something was going to be a trap that was going to kill us in there. And that's why we went and saved first. Because there was a... 100% chance we were going to get murdered there. Alright. Does this one smoosh you too? No, just the one on the right. Well, we've got a map. We're in the treasury, but we can't do anything from here, and this isn't a very treasureful looking treasury, if you ask me. Interesting. Do we check any of these other skeletons? Human skeletons, human skeletons, human skeletons, human skeletons. Human skeletons. Alright, well, we have now scanned several human skeletons. I guess we leave here. Doesn't seem like there's anything else we can do in this room, and uh, I'll take the map we got, thanks. Oh yeah, scanning. I mean, there's more skeletons down here actually, aren't there? These ones aren't scannable. I guess only the ones that are completely free of the wall are scannable. I think there's like a 0% chance this room is scannable, so we'll come back and scan it later maybe, but I'm gonna leave it for now. So, one of the things we know is that there's a purple room here and here that isn't supposed to be visible on the map under normal circumstances. If we can figure about, figure out how to get in there, that might be useful, but I don't know what that's gonna look like. Yeah, well, all we know is the second one up on the left is the fish-headed one. So... We will see if that comes into use later. Is there a way to get down... ...from here? A lot of these rooms don't have an easy way to descend. We can easily loop further away, but we can't easily just go where we want to be. So now the question is, we have two- we have one Ankh Gem and two places to take it. Because we could take it to the boss of the Twin Labyrinths, Baphomet, who we've met. Or we could take it to the boss of the Inferno Cavern, who we haven't seen yet. And... I would say it is not entirely clear to me if one of those is a better option than the other. So... Hmm. 
because this is the layer where there should be something to the left. Oh, it's just the boss room. It's not a secret room at all. Nice flip up into nowhere. Yeah, this is just the room that's purple. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that does uh, resolve that question, at least. Okay, well, I think now that we have our boss root available, we should go try and fight one of those bosses. I want to go see the Inferno Cavern boss because we haven't seen them before. So finding out what it is seems like it would be fun. And then we can come back and uh, if it turns out to not be a fun boss fight, we can go back to the Twin Labyrinths instead. Of course, here I am sitting in the lava Doomed for all time. There we go. Now, I seem to recall there is a spot here, yeah, that drops you into the lava. I didn't realize it was under the rock. Man, those boulders are so mean. Alright, let's just warp back to the Inferno Cavern and do this properly the first time. This is one of those jumps that is, like, unnecessarily rude. If you don't get it right, it just wastes so much of your time. Alright, let's see what's in here. Hello, Inferno Cavern boss! Ooh! You're a weird tentacle friend! Uh, it doesn't like that. We gotta whap the spikies. And that forces his eyelids open. That's really gross. <laughs> That's really gross. And then it goes down and they force it open again and it repeats. Woo! That's a big laser. He also gets the slappy arms back. Oh, you can just stand on him, though, which is interesting. I kind of didn't expect that to work. We are... Oh, it hurts you, though. Okay, you can't just stand on him. It kills you. Now I know. We don't want to be down there. <laughs> All right, we've learned. We've got some intel. That is a weird-looking boss, though. Eyeball amoebas are all well known for their lasers, yes. Let's go cap our health off before we go back and try that again. We could probably get it just by killing a couple monsters in there, but... If we go get a full heal after we kill the boss, that'll also save us a bit of time, so... Let's just go heal up first and then go back. I don't know if we're super well equipped for fighting him, but uh, it's cool and it doesn't seem impossible. I just need to not stand on the boss. All right. We double jump over here. We skip over that into the hole. And let's fight. Round two. Fight. Uh, let's go axe for now and keep the spears because we're attacking down into the eye most of the time. So having a, a weapon that can shoot down into him like we were doing in our earlier attempts sounds super useful to me. I don't know if we actually want those little demons to die or not. Because we can hit them with things. Like, they can be killed. I don't know what we're trying for here necessarily. But, it can be done. 
Something goes boing when we attack near the eyeball, though, and that does make me a little worried. Like, that goes boing. And I can't tell if it's going boing because the damage isn't working, or if it's going boing because the spear is hitting the back of the boss's head, and that prevents it from continuing to travel, so it breaks it. That's kind of what I'm hoping it is, is it's just a matter of, ow, ow, ow. Oh man, that did like, more damage than the boss has done to us in the whole fight prior to this point, just falling on him there. Yeah, it flashes red when it takes damage, which makes me think it is probably working, but it is weird how it goes bling, right? All right, we're gonna die here. Probably. That one didn't go through. So yeah, this isn't really that bad. We just have to make sure we don't fall on the boss. Anything short of that, and we kind of don't take enough damage for it to be a problem for many of these other attacks. It's just, if you fall on the boss, it drains your health instantly. So, don't let that happen. Because any of the rest of this is kind of not a big deal. That was a sad timing one. We lot it just at the wrong time. does hurt quite a bit missing those, though. Like that! That seems like it should have worked! Come on, guy! Work with me here. And we're dead. Yeah, <clears throat> basically it is just do not get hit by anything that bounces you into the middle. If that doesn't happen, we should basically be home free there. I don't know if the javelins we have are enough to kill the boss without needing to go in and doing some melee attacks as well. Because there is an opportunity to land a couple- oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, out of the lava before we lost too much health. There is an opportunity to jump in there and go for some slaps when it is up in the, like, shooting lightning phase. And it's possible that the trick there is to take out the silver shield when it is doing that so you can block before it goes for the, um, like, when it goes for the lightning attack so that you can go in and hit it when you have an opening. Also, the phrase, when you have an opening, is extra funny with a big eyeball. But, uh, like that. Something like that even is good enough, probably. We're getting a bunch more hits in that way, just by slapping him a couple of times when he pops up for that particular move. During the laser, we only really have the opportunity to throw a spear down at him, but for other moves, we can take advantage of them. Man, the timing on that is mean! Of course, the difference now is, after he does the first laser, it breaks the platforms that are closest to the eye, it looks like. Yeah, he's gonna do it again here. It, like, cooks the edge of the platform off, so you can't get as close to him as easily. Yeah. Well, this is bad. Every time we fall down, it's the worst possible thing. We need to try and avoid letting that happen. Ow. Forgot about the tentacle being able to swing in from off screen briefly. Otherwise, whoa, we can aim it now. That's gonna make our platforms even smaller. Don't. Don't you do that to me, that's mean! Aha, this one's still intact though. I can hit you at least twice with it, there we go.
Ugh, screwing that round up. We had a great opportunity to land a couple of heavy axe hits there and did not land any of them. Oh, and I almost fell in the pit, which is the worst possible outcome. Here comes the beam. I have to dodge a little bit here because I messed up those jumps pretty bad. Um, we're falling into the death hole again, which is probably going to kill us before I can get out. Yeah, that's very annoying. One bad bounce off some of those knockbacks and you are just dead. Because you take so much damage if you're touching them. Okay. One more try here. I feel like this one... I mean, one more try is probably not the right number of tries. I feel like this one is totally doable, though. I might try switching to the whip instead. Just to see if being able to throw faster attacks on that eye phase actually makes any difference. We're attacking in the air, so I kind of doubt it. But it could be interesting just to see. So we'll put our spears back on again for now. And immediately in the boss. That is the worst. That is the worst. We just lost like 200 health in the first 10 seconds because I made one bad bounce. Yeah, all right, we're just gonna let ourselves die and come try again, because that is incredibly poor. And now if we try it again without making that kind of same mistake immediately, we might have a better shot at it. But that whip did seem like it was working pretty good. We were able to land a couple of hits in a row, which should make a difference for... overall actually being able to hit him. We know that currently our axe is more damaging but being able to land the fast hits, I think, will make a difference. Um, I don't know if I can teleport mid-fight, but I don't really see if there's a point. Because if the problem is that I'm taking too much damage, dying is, is actually faster than getting reset to the start and having to go all the way back from town. So, I hate those little demons that clip you in towards the center again when they're flying away. Very annoying. They are very rude little demons. Yeah, we can whip really fast, so that means that there should be a decent chance to land some hits in if we actually have the opportunity to do it without getting stuck like this. But you take so much damage so fast! Alright. It, it does really make it feel like your runs aren't worth running if you fall in the pit early, though, which is sad, because it's going to happen a bunch of the time if you're trying to get aggressive and actually land damage in. When the platforms are destroyed like this, there's kind of just not a whole lot of alternatives if he's doing the jump up move. Yeah, that one. Alright. No need to be rude there, friend. We are already dead, so we're probably just going to restart here in a second, because I'm not doing any damage compared to some of our better attempts. Yeah, we're dead. Ugh. Time to reset. Okay, I don't know if there's a good way to make that less punishing, because we could try and attack him with just, like, shurikens. We could try and drop caltrips on his eye. Those things might work, too. That might be a little bit less dangerous. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can find an alternative here that puts us less prone to constantly falling directly into the death zone. Because basically, if we don't fall on the boss, we take no damage from the boss. So that's pretty good if we can manage to stop doing it. Let's go for Axe 
and since we have the option here, let's try Caltrips first. Because while the platform is close like this, we should be able to basically stand here and go Caltrips. They go a little too far, actually, from the base platform like this, which is kind of funny. They're they're too powerful. Something we have never before said about the Caltrips. Now that the platforms are destroyed, though, this might be the perfect distance for Caltrops. Yeah, we got all four Caltrop hits there, I think. That's pretty good. That might that might be better. I just immediately jumped in the hole anyway, but it might be better. Oh. That's weird. That's very weird. If you kill the demons while they're opening the eyes, the eye closes again. Well, we got a jillion of these Caltrops to try with. That, that might be working. It's definitely safer. We did get slapped into the middle, but that's because I wasn't paying attention to the tentacle arm that I could have killed by that point. So that's interesting. They do just bounce off him if he's got the eye closed already. Wow, you can just pump those into the spot while he's lasering, though, too. That's interesting. Okay, we might have a strat here. Sometimes while he's lasering, it does delete them, though, so it doesn't seem like it works 100% of the time in that context. Don't know why it worked sometimes and not others, but it does seem to be not consistent, at least for that. Oh! Interestingly enough, the shurikens didn't do anything, which is kind of weird. I was kind of expecting they would... Ooh, we're going straight to this phase now, huh? Yeah, okay, shurikens just don't seem to work. Don't know why. But the shurikens don't seem to work. Ow. Let's get over to this side for a minute. Come on. Don't you be doing that to me! Ah! No! Oh, that was the worst possible way to get slapped right at the end of that fight. Because something was definitely happening. It was starting to attack us in a different way. So I think the Caltrops method should work. Let's get back in there and give that another try. I think we're onto something here. We can go try and fight Baphomet too, but I feel like we're we're starting to find the, the moves for this guy. So I don't want to move on too early when we have the chance to kill this one. Yeah, we only take one damage from being touched by the, uh... the little tentacle arms, right? Like, that's nothing. While the space is open here, we can land a bunch of hits in there. Oh, I missed it! There we go. Land a spear or two in there. Now we switch to Caltrops. From up here, we can drop the Caltrops right on the eye. Or on the demons, in this case. Yeah, that... Trying to attack him with anything melee there is just probably a little too dangerous for it to be worth trying consistently. 
We, that beam does hurt, though, if you get touched by that. Good to know. If we get up high here... Nope, we're going into the death zone. Okay, we escaped the death zone without taking too much damage. Okay, I think I see some of the strategy here as well. That's not what I wanted to do, but I think I see what I'm trying to do here. So... Yes. No, get hit more, please! Okay, beam killed us. I'm starting to figure this out a little bit more, I think, though, because we can maneuver the laser away and try and protect one of the sides, so we can switch over to that side if he's not doing the laser beam to be able to land more melee hits and speed this up a little bit. The problem is I have no idea how much health this boss has, so I have no idea if we've made it to, like, I don't know, 25% health left when he was doing the other phase moves, or if it's, like, neat, he still has 75% of his health. You're not even close. So, that is the only concern with trying to just, like, keep smashing ourselves into this guy, is I have no idea how tough he is. Alright. We go again. I wish I knew what the boss's names were before when we were fighting them, instead of only after when we kill them. Because it would be fun to be able to be like... Sassing them as we know who they are. But we don't know who they are, so let's do a quick one of these. And ding, and slap them. No, miss every attack, we love that. Alright, spears. Throw two of those in, get out of the way. Caltrops time. Stand here. Drop the Caltrops. Some of those landed, some of them did not. We jump over that, we go for a quick attack, and we land on the other side. That's the juice. Now we got a probably a little beam coming here, yeah. Since I wasn't in position from trying to do the dive attack on the other one, we couldn't really capitalize on that opportunity, but we'll have other chances. Pop the shield out here real quick. Block. It does block. We land one hit before he drops. We come over to this side. Caltrops time. Now. All right. Spears. There they go. We go shield time. We go one hit. Nope, I timed it wrong that time. But it's still a good theory. We go Caltrops here. He's gonna angle it this time? No, not yet. We're not quite at the angling point. Two, three. Caltrops. Now it's gonna angle? Yes. So now we jump over to here. And we go one, two. All right, we go shield. We go hit, missed. That's okay, still landed on the other side. Demons knocked us back into the bad place, but we'll deal with it. We want to be on this side so that we can caltrip again. We're about to get slapped, though. Right into the bad place. Okay, we're doing this again. Bring up the shield, go for the block. After the beam goes, you wait, you jump, and you fall into the pit. Don't try and fall into the pit. That part's not good. Beam's coming towards me. That's fine. He's gonna come straight up. Yes, we leap the shield out. No, we do not fall into the pit. That is the one thing that is very bad. We are going to go for Caltrops. Caltrops. He went straight up, which is perfect. We go shield. I didn't actually get the shield out in time to do anything with it, but you know what? That's fine. Caltrops time. One, two, three. Nope, too early. One, two, three. That was a pretty good Caltrops combo. He's gonna come straight up here, so we need the shield again. 
now. And I fell in the hole. The hole is the bad place. We don't want to be in the hole. I don't really have a good opportunity to do anything about this, so I'm just going to wait this one. There we go. Now we're in a position where we can throw some Caltrops down. And immediately get stabbed. Up he comes, so we need a shield. We want to be on this side now, so let's Caltrops. Two, three, throw. Perfect. We go shield. We go to the top. We go for the whips. Ah, only got one whip in, but you know what? I'll take it. Two, three, Caltrops time. A couple of those got in at least. I'll take it. Up he comes. Back to the shield again. This is a very, like, rhythmic... But lots of actions required fight, it feels like. <laughs> we have to change a lot of stuff to take advantage of all these different windows of opportunity. This is perfect, though. This is what we were hoping for. We come up here, we slap him a couple times, and he's dead! Whew! V is dead. Congratulations, you've obliterated V! But the adventure continues. Well, that was a mess. <laughs> it worked, but it was a real mess. Although, I will give it credit. This whole game, I have been unimpressed with the Caltrops and the Rolling Shurikens, and this was a place where the Caltrops did good work. I guess we're going down. There's nowhere to go up here. So I guess down is the way. Ah, the top of the Chamber of Extinction. Also, we just broke our spine. <laughs> All right, we're in the top right of the Chamber of Extinction, Shiva's Crucifix. A stone shaped like a human. It looks like it was melted from extreme heat. Okay, what is this all about then? We know there's an angry blue eyeball here. No, don't, don't do that. There's a mural here. You know what, just to be sure, it won't do anything, but just to be sure. Nice. All right, let's put that away again forever. And let's go to the right. We'll come back here in a minute to experiment with this. Okay, we have an area transition here. Let's come down and see what this is all about first. There's a door there, it looks like. Got some Caltrops back, which is convenient. We have an open chest down here, which is also strange. I do like how this area has giant pillars, like the pillars that I'm using as the side of the stream. <laughs> Not quite the same pillars, but similar vein. Aha! I knew one of those was going to be breakable. Is one of these breakable also? Nope, not this time. Come on, little Mandragora, pop out and say hello. There he is. Alright, is this a room? Yes, it is. Pretty clever of you to find this place, considering. We get some javelins, we get some flares, we can get some chakrams. I think I have one chakram? I have none chakrams. All right, I'll buy a chakram. Mm. No, I'm not gonna buy them. We're almost at 300 coins. With a bit more money, we can buy ourselves that fancy program that we've been waiting for. I have a feeling 
we are going to need more chakrams eventually anyway, but we'll get there in time. There's a door up at the top left there that I want to go check, but first I want to go see what's down in the bottom right. Because this doesn't have an exit on the map, it has a room with like a person you can talk to. So I want to go see what's in there before we commit to leaving. That is also breakable? Hold on a second. I guess it's only breakable from this side. This is a weird looking room. It's weird looking in that it's empty. It feels like a trap. I don't trust rooms like this. Especially when we haven't saved yet. A mystery lies within, within two murals. The small one will call it forth. The large one holds the mystery within. Face this challenge with the golden key in hand. Okay. So... I don't know what to do with that yet, but we're going to leave it for now. And get down to the bottom here again. I have a theory about what I might be talking about, but I don't know for sure, because I haven't seen a small version of the huge mural with the mystery symbols on it that we saw in the other part of the Chamber of Extinction. Either way, though, since we don't have a golden key, we're probably going to need to give it a bit of time anyway, so let's just scoot around here. I do like the little mandragoras, they're fun. Just because... Yeah, I thought so. It was not worth the effort, but it was worth a try just to see if anything would change. Where does this take us? <laughs> Thanks! Thanks, Inferno Cavern! I love being under, under lava when I go out of a door. Alright. Let's get out of this pit. I guess I'll just warp out of the pit, because there's no reason to stay in the pit now. Okay, so we've beaten another boss. Is anything going to be different now that we've done that? I guess we should probably go check in with Mulbruck and Zelpud just to see. They almost certainly don't have anything new to say. But we did just beat a boss, so they might. If we just jump out of here, is it going to drop us into the Chamber of Extinction every time? Yes, it does. Alright, this isn't the Song of Life room either. We're starting to get a bunch of these items collected. There's not that many things left for us to find. There's still some. But we're starting to work our way through the whole pile. Okay. Other than that, is there anything else important down here? Doesn't really look like it. It may literally just be a place for us to leave from now. I want to slap this some more, but before we do anything else silly, we should probably go back up to the surface and talk to our friends. We're probably not going to go too much longer today. I was planning to go to around 5 o'clock my time, which is almost now. There's actually a hidden dungeon underneath my home. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Yeah, sounds like he's got nothing relevant to say. Yeah. That's fine. All right. So, I guess then... Let's just do one more test here, just in case. I've checked this several times now, but we did just change the world by beating another boss. Incidentally, too, every time we've killed one of those big bosses, an eyeball has come out of them. We just killed a boss that was a giant eye. So... I would be willing to believe that uh, that one is particularly relevant for changing the world state. 
And let's just do a real quick visit over here to our mysterious waterfall door and see if that has changed. Either the tent or the door. Because if either is different, then there might be something fun there, but... We will see. We also have 300 gold now, so we can go and unlock that program inside... Uh, the Tower of Illusion, was it? I think so. That's still closed. Okay. This is door five. Where does this take us? Underwater. In a spooky place. The, ooh, okay, that was a fun reveal. The Tower of the Goddess. It's got TVs in it. This is a spooky place. We got Medusa heads. Ah! Oh! They shoot me with curse. None shall trespass upon this forbidden land. The place hidden further ahead holds many mysteries. Fly with the golden wings. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I was kind of just going there to knock. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can stand on top of this statue. Can I attack this guy? Yes. I don't know why the other one didn't let me, but I think I actually could have. I just did it wrong. You can stand on the arms of the statues that are in the foreground. I love the little Dracula heads, though. Those are good. Good little Medusa head surrogates. Bunch of cash. What are you? What is this? The Magatama Jewel is the key to the enchanted mantra. Well, we saw something about chanting previously, so we'll need a mantra to chant. What is this? There's a treasure chest. Great. I cannot do anything about it, but there is one. Now, this tower, is this the same tower the giants built? Because this is, seems a lot more technologically advanced than the giants were at. Oh, great. It frees his eyeball. Oh, and then he reforms later! That's even better! Is this breakable? Not by me. Alright, let's go explore around a little bit further in here then, I guess, while we have the chance. I don't know why I got lightninged earlier. It might have been for attacking the statue? I believe that. What does this say? The lake created by Migala and Futo. Ribu carries the water to the tower. The place where the finger points, and Anunnaki refuses to gaze upon. Add that to our screenshots of things giants have said folder. What did that button do? I don't know, but it did something. What is going on in here? The hesitation in thy heart is an unseen wound. Shine upon it with the eye of truth. Those climbing the tower never turn back. Abao Aku attacks the hesitant. Okay. I'm... Unclear of where what we're trying to do in here. Once we start climbing the tower, we're apparently not allowed to turn back, 
so that'll be a problem for us, probably. Oh, great, we fell through the glass. <laughs> Thanks. It says something about coming back here with golden wings, too, and we don't have those. Oh, as much as I want to do more in here, this might have to be a thing for another day. Come back to the Tower of the Mother and explore this further. Tower of the Goddess, sorry. It's the Shrine of the Mother? Shrine of the Mother, Tower of the Goddess. And uh, see what else this place has in store for us at that point. Because... I got some other stuff I gotta go do today. So thanks for joining us for this stream of more La Mulana. We've uh, finally made some progress and have been at least temporarily freed from the clutches of the Gate of Illusion. So next time we'll come back and explore this Tower of the Goddess some more, maybe. See what we can do with it. Either way, have yourselves a great afternoon, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Until then, bye bye